The Beneficials Hollywood Screenplay just won its fourth award for Best Feature. All right, so we're going to go in and we're going to take a deep, deeper dive at this and we're going to look at how this is our story. Right, Nanook? This is our story. He's just, he's just a polar bear. Don't worry about him. He's still a puppy though. All right, let's go. Uh, I want to go through some things because I want you to understand that uh, this is a process. Okay, everything is a process, and there's a lot of movies out there that um, we've all have seen movies that get great awards and acclamations, and we go and watch them, and they just suck. But I mean, that's the the industry is is weird. So. Um, I'm not in a hurry. Uh, I, I'm not taking my time, but I'm not in a hurry because I, I want to uh, hook up with the right people who have the same vision, uh, and that takes a lot of things to fall into place. Okay, so what I want to explain is how it was conceived and where we are now and where we go from here. And the, the reason I say we is because, yes, I know, I wrote it, uh, it was my vision, but when I say we, this means all of us, because the story, if you read the story, it now it has been amended for s some of you who have read the screenplay, it, it has been amended uh, a few times, and it's not a hugely different story, it's still, it's still all of the same story, uh, there's just different, uh, um, parts of the protagonist and the antagonist and there's it's much better and I had to shorten it also so you know when you get judged like that um, one of the biggest things against me was it's too long it's two hours so I think I had to condense it down to like 140 minutes which which is you know when you when you really, it's, it's almost like taking part of your heart and carving it out and, you know, it's, it's very difficult, okay? It's like going in and watching these deleted scenes on some of these movies. But anyway, uh, welcome into my home. The, this is the Poly Nation. We're going to talk about this screenplay that is very, very important. Now, it's not... You know, we're not talking about worms, essentially. We're not talking about, you know, composting. We're, and we're not talking about uh, just gardening stuff. But we're talking about nature. And this is what it's about. So this is us. And this is our story. So as I said, it just received its fourth award. Uh, and I'll post a link to it. And I'll put a, a picture of it up here. But um, you can go there and you can see where it won the award and um, to back up, but you know, I wrote it in um, the summer of 2017, and uh, I'm on my computer here, so I took down some notes, so I, d I don't want to lose anything here. I want to, I want you to get the full story of what what I'm trying to say to you, uh, what my message is here. So I wrote it in the summer of 2017, and. In 2014, I believe, I, I came out with the uh, coloring pages, and that was the inspiration for these characters that you see uh, in the illustrations. And uh, so then, after that, I came out with uh, the Worm Farming Coloring and Activity book. That debuted, and um, that was part of an award because we ran a Kickstarter and I wanted it to be, I wanted that to be an award for those who uh, were involved with the Worm Farming Revolution book. Uh, that, that was handed out as, as part of an award for those that helped me get that Worm Farming Revolution book um, out to the masses. So I wrote the Worm Farming Revolution and, you know, created the Kickstarter and it, you guys really helped me get that out 
uh, to the masses um, into print. And uh, the reason why that I, I went with the Kickstarter was to help build the notoriety. So uh, I thank you guys so much for that. Um, so along with um, those who helped me with the Kickstarter, they got my other books that I authored, which was, you know, my personal methods for gardening. Uh, a complete worm farming and composting presentation that is completely editable uh, for those that are interested in a worm farming presentation. Um, the book itself was autographed by yours truly. So you could say that uh, the revolution at that point was on, baby. I mean, it was a, a building revolution. And it was, you know, by 2015, you know, I had, I had started the website in 2010, but by 2015, I mean, more and more people were talking about it, just about everybody uh, that was, you know, in organics and natural uh, growing and, you know, being self-sufficient and prepping and all that stuff. They, they were talking about worms and, and they know that worms were very crucial. So after all the projects, the books, the videos uh, and website, I thought that there had to be sort of this, there, there's still kind of a disconnect and, and it's how do I get this uh, idea about nature more out to the, the masses and, and to the world. You know, it's like everybody has their their methods and like writing books and doing videos and uh, websites and stuff and it's like how do I reinvent the mousetrap? And so that it just kind of occurred to me, you know, since the coloring pages in the in the coloring book had kind of already come out, I was like, that was my my moment of, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a book. Initially, it was going to be a book for children, and then I thought, I'm limiting myself because the way that the idea was coming about was that this is more than just a book. This is, this is like a Pixar or Disney or Lucasfilm. I guess they're all the same company, but, you know, any company would be interested in picking this up, in my mind, because of the way that was written. And judges who have judged the screenplay have also said, you know, this is very original. Uh, the concept was original. The protagonist and antagonist are... Uh, uh, work well together. There's a great arc for the protagonist, and there's many characters. And this is written like a Pixar. And I could no longer, you know, just do it as a book. So I thought, okay, let let's go. Let's just go all out for this and and I've been entering competitions uh, screenplays competitions and film festivals uh, for I guess since a few years now and it takes time and you know like I said earlier it just you what well, what we are doing here again I'm saying we because this is us this is our story when you get into the story and you read it uh, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but uh, when you get into it, you find out that this is our story because this is nature at its finest being told. And it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's getting off the chemical fertilizers. It's, it's pretty much a story where we all, all have been and have figured out this is the way to do it. <laughs> so you've heard a lot about it. Now you're going to hear everything about it. Okay, I'm going to do a pause here. This is probably one of the longest videos that I've done. 
here, uh, may, maybe ever, but hopefully you've uh, grabbed a cup of coffee. Um, but I've watched uh, some of the video and I thought that maybe this is very important that um, I add a little more transparency to uh, this screenplay because um, I want to... I want to show you what some of my critics have said and some of the judging scores for this uh, screenplay. And the separate links that I have are for you to, if you want, is to share the separate links down below with uh, other people that you think might find it interesting. So, um, it, I don't want you to have to share a 30 minutes, 40 minutes, or an hour worth of um, video with somebody. But if you think there's a specific um, link that you want to share with somebody, find the link down below and share it with them. But here are some of my critics that uh, said that here's some things to work on. And here are some things that are great about the video. Not, not all critics are equally the same. Some will find the story really great and others will find it okay. And that's what we want though. We want input like that. We want honest input to where we see the things that um, a lot of people agree with and then other things that critics say you need to work on this. And I've taken that to heart. I've taken it to where, you know what, I think that you're right about this, so I'm going to change the structure here or there. Or there might have been parts where I've disagreed with a critic and thought, no, I'm going to keep it the way that it is. And um, other critics have agreed with me. So, but that's what we want, you know. And you see uh, awards where many uh, movies have gotten great awards and Nobody even liked the movie. And it's like, don't even understand it. So anyway, take that to heart. So you're going to see flashes where you can pause it, but you're going to see flashes of some of my critics um, judging my work. And you can just pause it and read it, and then it'll go right back in into the video. Okay? So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I also want to add that um, these judges, uh, I don't know who the judges are. The judges don't know who I am. Sometimes they just go by uh, an analyst and then they have a number. So I don't get to pick them. They don't get to pick me. It may be a genre that they absolutely hate. Um, it, it may be a genre that they like. So just to, you know, being fair to them, they're just critiquing me and judging me on the script alone and the many different uh, line items that they have to check mark. So, you know, I, I may be getting one that favors me and I may get a judge that doesn't like me. Who knows? You know, <laughs> don't know. But just to be fair to them, uh, that's just the nature of the beast. During the, uh, the pandemic, it created an awakening for this industry industry that we're in. And, you know, everybody was, they were 
uh, locked down in 2020 or they were, uh, you know, just at home. It's like, well, what am I going to do? So, you know, people got into remodeling. They got into reading books. Uh, they got into uh, just binge watching movies. Uh, they were learning how to make bread and baking it and fermenting everything. And people were also concerned about the future. So they were like, they were getting into composting, worm farming, uh, agriculture, raising chickens, gardening, et cetera, et cetera. And so through all of this, I mean, all this that was happening is like, okay, this is our time. This is the awakening. And I'm not talking anything woke. This is, I mean, this is just an awakening for the industry because people's eyes, they're being opened. You know, they're, they're because of being concerned for their family and for their future and trying not to be dependent on others or on industries for uh, their future and to sustain themselves. They want to learn. Uh, you've seen canning become very big, dehydrating, um, baking bread, as I mentioned. People were like, I want to learn, and, and it's a big how-to movement. Uh, kind of, you know, it's, it, it's slowly been happening. You know, this, I mean, the this movie or this screenplay should have been written really decades ago, in my opinion. But, you know, everything in its time, right? So, uh, so people are concerned in the future. They're like, how am I going to sustain myself? You know, there's fears, there's fear of the future. There's, you know, 2020, like I said, was an eye opener. So then there, uh, we saw an increase in worm farming cells and anything gardening and composting, recycling related, we saw those sales just increase exponentially. So then people got to think, they got to thinking was, is 2021 going to be better? We saw more of the same with 2021. And then 2022, here we are, 2022, it's at the end of 2022. And we're asking ourselves, what's 2023 going to look like? And everybody is uh, concerned about what everything's going to look like because we, we've got, we have inflation, uh, there's energy crisis, there's um, supply chain issues, there's strikes, uh, fear of other industries going on strike, like railroad, the uh, airline industry, tech industry, um, there's weather issues that we have to deal with all the time, earthquakes, volcanoes erupting right now, uh, hard winters, we've been through those over the past few years, um, bare shelves at supermarkets, everybody fighting o over toilet paper and, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, you know, we, we all have experienced it, so, I mean, this is more than just a trifecta, this is... This is so many things wrapped up in, into one uncertainty. And the biggest thing, though, that I see more and more and more because of people getting into this, uh, people like us who are, who are into gardening and warfare, we see the, the light bulb going on and we see uh, just the enormous impact that in the thirst that, that people are having for the knowledge and for the information of how uh, to compost and how to grow. So this is our time. And uh, this screenplay is something that will go out and just help awaken more and more people and teach them and educate them like this is how you do it. So, you know... <clears throat> The problem is, you know, even though this is our time, it's like, who will help get this story onto the big screen? And who will actually uh, be able to push the screenplay around from desk to desk, you know? Um, will someone 
really see the potential to help and educate while entering the world on or educating the world on, on how to be self-sufficient. You know, with the talks about food scarcity and 2023, we will not know what's going to happen because of the chemical fertilizer. Uh, you know, there's, there's, they're cutting back on that and farmers don't know, you know, prices are going up for that. So you could say that the beneficial story uh, was written ahead of its time. Although I, did, I didn't foresee any of this, but um, like I said, it's quite actually the opposite. I mean, this should have been written decades ago. But, you know, our time was consumed with, even now, it's, it's consumed with fake heroes. We watch the TV and, and movies. It's, you know, you got fake heroes that fly, they turn green, and, you know, lasers come out their eyeballs. I'll keep it clean. <laughs> so, um, what I wanted to do was uh, write a story and show real heroes, real superheroes. And that's when, that's why I wrote this. And everybody's seen it. I'd like to get it framed. I'd like to get that in the picture there. Anyway, here's a picture of it. Uh, but th these are real heroes, and, and these are heroes that all of us teach about, and these they're heroes that we're learning about, and we just take them for granted, but. They help, uh, they educate and they help people prep and sustain and grow their fu future. So I'm going to kind of get into the story a little bit without giving anything away. I'm going to get into the story a little bit and show you um, the main characters, the pitch, and the synopsis. And then maybe you can help me because I'm looking for people that can help and and maybe you have connections, but like I said, it's a story that I'm not in, in, in a huge rush. Rush. I want to find uh, the right people, the right uh, investors, the right director, the right studio, uh, because this this story has the potential to go uh, very, very big. You know, we've seen many stories out there already, like. There's one out there called Strange World. Right now it's a flop, is what they're saying. Um, but, you know, it can, min, it can win many awards and it can go on and it can either be a failure or it can, if it's done the right way, it can be an amazing story. It can, it can be the next uh, um, Frozen or whatever. But... Uh, it was basically written to be on the big screen and hopefully when somebody reads it uh, they can help me and what I'm doing right now is just be is since we won our fourth award we're building notoriety so that's what we're doing we are building notoriety so that it it um, gets out there more and more and more and more and so that uh, people see it and they become part of the revolution which we're actually past but we're into the awakening and uh, help teach others and help others to be sustainable so I'm actually going to uh, if you want to pause the video you can go to the there's a link below you can go to the beneficials web page you can go to the website and you can follow along you can see the illustrations watch the one minute trailer and even download the uh, pitch deck and read all about it basically uh, you know we live in the world of processed foods and even though we're currently experien experiencing a rise in natural home grown produce manufactured foods which are filled with chemical fertilizers poisons neurotoxins are also increasing 
Many have already discovered how to create the best soil to grow food, and I've written those books for adults uh, also. However, our future lies in the next generation. So Generation Z, or the I generation, which is the information, is what I'm calling the information generation, or the robotic generation, AI, whatever you want to call it. Uh, th these kids, these or young adults, will carry the, the torch of truth. And I firmly believe that, that that generation will be the generation of truth seekers amidst mountains of uh, fake news and misinformation, politically motivated products and agendas. The task will be monumental for our children and grandchildren. Sometimes the truth can emerge and stare them straight in the face without ever even knowing it. But the beneficial story will do just that. While they're watching this fascinating story about how the soil works, it will be planting seeds of truth they'll grow to appreciate and hopefully one day practice or be synthetic, synthetic, sympathetic to. I mean, how many of you are actually part of something, but you're sympathetic to it because you've learned something uh, in your life? You're, you're sympathetic and you want to help promote something. So you share it, or you talk about it, and or you, you might get involved. And hopefully that's what this video does too, al along with show you where we are right now in uh, the phase of the screenplay. So, are you an organic grower, composter, food recycler, or serve organic and natural food in a restaurant? At a, or at a farmer's market, then you are a hero too. But what makes these plants make you look so awesome is the soil heroes that make the plants so amazing, the beneficials. Finally, there's a story behind what makes our gardens and food much like medicine. It's a story about the forgotten heroes hard at work within the soil food web. It's a story that will show people what you do is for the benefit of your customers, your family, and the world. It is what I call the greatest story in Earth. So it's time for new heroes, not the same old kind of DC, Marvel, or, you know, the heroes I talked about earlier. I mean, these are actual, real heroes heroes that we take for granted and it is a real world it's what we find in nature i want to show everyone something different i want to show people a real world a world of ordinary beings with extraordinary abilities i want to show ordinary people how plants need a hero too and when our food becomes extraordinary so do we because food is medicine so, now we're going to talk about the synopsis. And like I said, there's a pitch deck. So if you're on there and you want to download the pitch deck, you can see the whole, it's like a presentation. And you can view the one minute uh, trailer that we have with, with the illustrations and, and the uh, music. In a world where synthetic chemicals reign supreme lies a strange, desolate land filled with bizarre food crops. An ordinary worm from the forest awakes to this discovery. Hermie and his forest friends lead a revolt against an invading army of hungry pests. Through this dangerous mission, they courageously attempt to save the crops and the agricultural industry to form a new kind of superhero. The Beneficials. Thank you. 
The story begins deep within a beautiful forest of tall trees, lush green landscapes, and beautiful bright flowers. Some of the brightest, silkiest petals you'd ever seen. But what made the forest so beautiful were all the amazing, extraordinary creatures hard at work on the surface of the forest floor and within the soil food web. As a matter of fact, there wasn't anything much different from other forests except for one thing, Hermie. Hermie was a little worm who came from a unique family, a long lineage of accomplishments and overachievers. He so desperately wanted to be like his father and grandfather who'd won many trophies for their ability to turn plants from ordinary to extraordinary. Silent winds blow over a worn and tattered landscape. Stretched out puddles of mud and water paint the ground. Decimated plants and trees all piled up as far as the eye can see. With dark overcast and a confident feeling of defeat, Hermie lie motionless. Numb and unable to feel most of his battered and bruised body, Hermie took in an enormous gasp of air. Coughing uncontrollably, he turned over and mustered enough strength to pull himself up just enough to see what utter destruction lie before him. Feeling afraid, and not knowing where he was, Hermie attempted to make some kind of contact with his family. Mom? Mom? Dad? 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 Mom? 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 A few feet away, he saw something shiny. Exhausted, he crawled a short distance and found his shovel. He clung to it with every ounce of strength, then passed out. Hermie slowly awakened to the sound of an unfamiliar voice and strange piercing eyes. Who are you? <coughs> asked the tall cornstalk. Me? asked Hermie, trembling for his life. You see, I got lost when this big storm came and washed me out here. I'm from the forest and... Uh, oh... I don't feel so good. The forest? <coughs> yeah, I, I'm Hermie, the Wormy. I have the shovel, and you should see what I do to plants. A worm! <coughs> you will not attack us! Get him! Hermie ran away and hid, but in a field of thousands of corn stalks, there was nowhere to hide. One by one, each cornstalk revealed themselves. Stalk one, stalk two, stalk three. They lunged towards Hermie. Hermie managed to slip behind them, only to be accosted by more cornstalks. He began to dig like never before. This was the only way. Closer and closer they came towards him. Grab his shovel and bring that creature to me. One final scoop, and down the hole he went.
So Hermes is our main character. He's the worm. He lives in a beautiful forest. He just, uh, he's just a young worm with big ambitions of being like his parents who've made plants extraordinary. It's his mission. Okay, it's his mission. So he sets out one day to do just that while befriending a few beneficial microbes along the way. During his adventure in the forest, a huge storm washes him into an unfamiliar place, a place everyone warned him to stay away from, the cornfield. You understand why it's completely different. You know, we have two, two different kind of opposing communities here. So after the storm, he finds himself lost in a desolate land containing almost no life within the soil. He's accosted by huge, scary corn stalks. He notices something bizarre about the corn and the strange land he's in. This isn't anything like the forest, he whispered to himself. There's something wrong with this place. Suddenly, he discovers his mission is much bigger than himself. Hermie desperately needs to get back home, find his forest friends, Proto and Emma, Gus and Bob, who are the microbes, to help save the maize community from dangerous pests and chemicals. While trying to accomplish this dangerous mission, a new kind of superhero is born, and that is the environmental heroes of nature, the beneficials. And here you can see my, what I call my zippity doo -dah, uh creation of the characters, the main characters that are in it. Proto, Bob, Gus, Nema, and Hermie the Worm. These are protozoa, bacteria, fungi, nematodes, and worms. Now, I'm not discluding all the other um, my, uh, macrobes that, that have a huge role. In the screenplay, we also talk about um, ants, and we talk about the bees, and, and uh, roly-polies, and all these, and even some animals that, that, you know, are all part of nature and help make the forest uh, so beautiful. And <clears throat> that's one of Hermes' main challenges is that he has to find out who he is. He has to, to basically discover himself and he's got fears that he has to overcome. So he, he tries to overcome his fears, and, and through that he, he discovers that, oh my gosh, my, my mission isn't about me and wanting to make plants extraordinary. I have got to try to unite people who are completely different from one another. See, I'm, I'm saying people, but actually it's characters, but all kinds of different characters who are different, and uh, communities that are different. And it all kind of comes together with these life lessons and him kind of growing up and discovering that it's not about him. It's, it's, it's about uniting everybody, overcome adversities, and work towards a common goal. And I think that that really uh, rings true to what we're going through today. Um, whether it's political or religious or um, just, you know, disagreements. You know, there's, there's lessons that we can learn in this screenplay with, with the many different hard decisions that uh, the characters have to make. So, um, but this is a story like uh, I've never done before. It's not a book. It's not a... Uh, you know, web page, video, it's, this is a big screenplay that we need to help get to fruition. Uh, and I believe that it might possibly be the very first of its kind. Um, I know there's been a lot of different, you know, nature type of, of movies, um, but none ever told like this before. So uh, each real life organism has uh, a purpose and a place within the soil food web benefiting plants and now people are going to learn you know this 
they're going to learn this even without even knowing that they're being educated because it's it's written to be very entertaining and uh i mean that's 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 pretty much it i mean that's that's the synopsis and uh you know i've been worm farming and composting for over a decade well over a decade probably almost getting into two decades but uh, I've created several publishings and thanks to the Kickstarter um, that helped build notoriety and uh, that educates everyone from kids to adults and I teach them how to create the best soil amendment a plant could ever need to grow healthy with big fruit uh, and no need for chemical fertilizers anymore and we're all we're all there and you're seeing it more and more in all of these videos that people are posting the the importance of working with nature uh, and <clears throat> the rest of the website shows you um, the illustrations if you want to see the illustrations and there's uh, even some more in the in the pitch pitch deck so uh, how can you help you know, you could share this video with people you think that uh, might be, have a concern about where we're headed as far as, you know, growing food and medicine. Um, I'm not looking for this video to go viral. I'm just looking for, you know, just to tell you where we're at in uh, the screenplay and that it's a process and um, it's... I mean, you can help. Uh, you can help by posting it on Facebook. Um, like I said, download or share the Beneficials pitch deck. Um, the links below. If you know a producer, director, or someone with connections, <laughs> share the web page post, the pitch deck, or the synopsis with them, because um, this is a community effort. This is. Like I said, I know I'm the one that wrote it, and it's been my vision, but everybody has this vision, okay? Everybody's written things, and they've talked about things, but this is something on a scale that I haven't seen yet, and with everybody's help, I, I did run a Kickstarter and a barn raiser, which failed. So uh, I thought, well, let's just, let's just get it into festivals and competitions and let's start building notoriety so that's what we're doing right now so there's a you know a lot of hollywood actors and stars and sports figures that are actually into worms believe it or not because they do have a concern for the environment they have a concern for natural uh, or clean water and air and energy and uh, all that um, we all share those concerns um, one of my friends just posted a picture of Heidi Klum with her uh, outfit, which was uh, a worm. She did actually did a pretty good job on it. And from what I hear, she always dresses up during Halloween uh, with all kinds of different neat little outfits. But as you know, a supermodel doesn't always wear very much. And of course, because they're showing off their body. But she was full on dressed as a worm. Now, as weird as it is, she was dressed as a naked worm because worms don't wear clothes. Well, not in the real world. But when they dress up like superheroes, they might adorn something uh, a little more spectacular. Um, so uh, it was it's fascinating to see what she did. And <clears throat> who knows? I mean, once somebody gets a hold of this and passes it around, you know, it could go viral. I'm not expecting it to. I'm just trying to sh show you where we are here and, and uh, what's in the works. Uh, but like I talked about earlier, um, many awards have been given to terrible movies and uh, few awards to even no awards and laurels um, have gone to great movies and vice 
vice versa, you know. So, I mean, how many of you have watched a really bad movie from beginning to end? I'm a guy, you know, I'm, I'm 52, so I admit it, I'm into Turner Classic Movies. I watch Turner Classic Movies all the time. Uh, and it's interesting because there was a movie on there called uh, The Player. Uh, let's see if I've got it up here. Yeah, it was a movie called The Player. I think it was a couple of weeks ago that Turner Classic Movies played it. And he was, I'll read the, I'll read the pitch. Uh, the Hollywood studio executive is being sent death threats by a writer whose script he rejected. But which one? So that's the problem with these executives, Hollywood executives, producers, you know, uh, directors. Not them, but people that are under them, executives that are under them, they see from what was said in the player. And I know this because I've, I'm in the industry now of trying to get the screenplay, but they see tens of thousands of uh, scripts per year. And it's like, how do you juggle all that? How do you, how do you find out which ones are really going to be uh, box office hits or even just successful like I said a strange world that had just come out that was so far a flop now I'm sure they'll, they'll get their money back over time um, water world when it came out I think it was 110 or 130 million dollar but they considered that a flop I liked water world a lot now I'm sure they got their money back but it was considered a flop so with this being a um, animation, it takes millions of dollars just to get everything organized, uh, to get people together, to get you know all the digital animations going. And I know, and it seems like everything I do, I I pick the most hardest and challenging things ever. <laughs> to uh, set as a goal. And I don't know if that's good or, or bad. Maybe it's good, but uh, you know, maybe it's bad to do too many uh, difficult things. But um, it, it has its risks and its rewards. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking a big risk on it. Uh, but, it, you know, if it doesn't do anything, at least it help, helps me as a person to better myself. Uh, so these executives, they see you know, 50,000 or more, and some get passed on, and an executive producer will probably only produce, you know, a, just a few, uh, because they, they can only budget for so much, and they can only be hands-on so much, and so they're uh, busy, 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 but the great thing is that there's a lot of producers out there, there's a lot of executives out there, there's a lot of studios out there, and there's also a lot of uh, screenwriting competitions out there, too. So um, that's when we can help each other try to um, accomplish this niche type of um, movie. And I say niche because um, it, it really is a, there's not been a story like this it's a niche story it's not your your big genres like World War two zombies uh, superheroes um, it's just a, a niche movie and there's been a lot of successful niche movies uh, you can go on, on IMDB and look at niche movies uh, tell no one 2006 I've never heard of it uh, it got a made a score of 82 um, which is considered I guess good. Uh, where do we go? Where do we go now in 2011? Never heard of it. Little White Lies in 2010. I never heard of it. Uh, the Kids Are All Right in 2010. I never heard of it. 86 was the meta score on that one. Um, the list goes on. 
uh, number eight about Schmidt. Got an 85, made a score, which was, uh, who's in that one? Jack Nicholson. But anyway, those are a niche, and that's what we're making here is a niche uh, movie. So that's really all I wanted to say in this. I know this video was much longer than, than uh, what I wanted, and it's not, you know, we're not talking, we're not out in the field, and we're not, I'm not showing you anything uh, to learn from, but uh, this is very important. This is very important because this is us. This is us, and I want to remind everyone that this is us, and this is our movie. Yes, I wrote it, but this is our movie. It is our story, and if the movie is successful, it will go on to inspire the world. You know, many more people that are desperate, desperately seeking people like you, uh, no matter what your industry is or what you're, you're doing, if you're uh, composting, you're gardening, worm farming, uh, doing compost tea, recycling, um, a prepper or prepping or, which is funny because prepping is just basically, it's, it's a lifestyle. That's what people do. It's what, you know, people who are self-sustaining, they are pretty much preppers. Um, but, you know, for those that, that are gardening and trying to grow plants and grow uh, medicine that's in pots and planters, if you sell pots and you sell different types of planters, uh, soil amendments and whatever, I mean, almost anything I mean <laughs> the possibilities the list is in end list okay so uh, that's what this is about I've got links below go go check them out <clears throat> I'm sorry that this is longer than normal but it's very important uh, like I said this is our fourth award and we're just getting started so we're building notoriety and if you can help me you can always go to the website you can hit the donate button That'll help get uh, the screenplay into more uh, festivals and competitions and not just, you know, regular average ones, but ones that are, that are tough to get into, you know, because it costs a lot more money. But that can help build notoriety um, much more. So anyway, uh, this is Polly with the Poly Nation, and I hope... That this kind of helps explain some things on where we're at, where we are at with the beneficials Hollywood screenplay. So that's it, and I'll see you next video. Probably will be outside this time. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, bye. Shh, I'm doing a video. Oh. So that's it. I mean, I know it was very long, but very, very necessary. I, I know. Hang on a second. Very, very necessary. So, um, you know, I never, ever, ever say this, but please like, subscribe, comment, share, chit chat, chat, chit, chit, whatever you want to do. I don't care send it down, dislike it, or up, send it up to the angels. Whatever you want to do, just help me out. There's a donate. I'll send a donate link down there if you want to donate. We can get this out, and we can get it to uh, people that, uh, you know, who, who knows who's going to see it, you know. Many things have happened by people just, you know, passing things along to the right people. So all, is, all it takes is one person, right, Nuke? Nanook, it's Eskimo for polar bear. So, anyway, uh, it's just a beautiful, you'll love the story. It's just beautiful, just full of, full of uh, characters and, and entertainment and life lessons and nature. And who doesn't love great stories like that, you know? It'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry. Uh, it's just full of emotion and just a, 
huge journey of where we all have come from, uh, where we are now, and where we're going, and all that stuff. So, just as beautiful as, as our little polar bear here. Just a puppy still, right? I know, I know. We're done. Anyway, so, hey, you want to say goodbye? You want to say goodbye? Speak. Speak. Come on. Come on. Speak. Speak. Come on. Speak. Speak. Tell him goodbye. Speak. Good boy. All right. We love you all.